The sea is a dangerous place. No one tool can guarantee your safety. But one can definitely help. Knowledge. This is Anatomy of Disaster, here to give you that one tool to help keep you alive out there, shipmates. Underway in the North Atlantic in mid-January, hauling a load of taconite from New York to Edinburgh. You've just finished your watch in the engine room before you head to your berthing and hit the rack for the night. You decide to have a smoke. Typically the guys would just burn one in the berthing area, but you like to take a break on the fantail. The bracing night air clears your head and helps you wind down. Heading aft, you pass the bosun, heading to the bridge for his nightly OOD watch. He grunts at you. If you're gonna go out there, put a damn cork vest on. Last thing I need is to lose one of you snipes in the dark. You grunt an affirmation and grab a flotation device off the bulkhead, donning it so as long as it shut the old man up. Heading out back, the air is indeed bracing, a nip on your exposed face. You pull out a Chesterfield in your lucky Ronson. Focusing on igniting the cigarette, you didn't see the built-up ice on the deck from the sea spray. You slip and feel the world invert and a mighty splash. It feels like a thousand daggers stabbing into you at once. You scramble to the ocean surface as your head breaks clear of the water. Coughing and sputtering, your heart races. You feel disoriented. You look for your ship in a panic. Spotting it, you watch it slowly but steadily steam away from you, faster than you could swim. You begin to shiver violently. Every bit of exposed skin feels brutally painful. As you bob up and down in the cold open waters of the North Atlantic, you begin to fall prey to one of the ocean's most brutal and merciless killers, hypothermia. Hypothermia is a medical emergency that occurs when the body loses heat faster than it can produce it, causing core temperature to drop below that required for normal metabolism and body functions. It is caused by prolonged exposure to temperatures that are cooler than 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature where the body can no longer maintain a normal temperature indefinitely. Water being a natural thermal conductor greatly exacerbates the heat loss. Water will rob the body of heat 25 times faster than air. A person can become hypothermic in water temperatures as high as 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 26 degrees Celsius if exposed to it for long enough. Certain other elements increase the rapidity of hypothermia in water. Movement causes water warmed up by the body to move away, causing an increase of heat loss. Having large amounts of the body submerged or having vital heat loss areas, such as the head, neck, armpits, and groin uncovered or submerged also increases it. Things such as wind chill or the perceived decrease of air temp felt by the body due to the flow of air, air temp, and freezing ocean spray also increase it. Also things about the body such as being dehydrated or having a slim or skinny physique can all increase the onset of hypothermia. Dr. Gordon Giesbricht is a professor of thermophysiology at the University of Manitoba and is considered the world's leading expert in hypothermia. In regards to the body's response to submersion in cold water, he coined the 1-10-1 rule. One is for the first minute in the water. The body experiences an initial cold shock response. The individual might experience uncontrollable gasping and hyperventilating. They may feel painful muscle cramps and disorientation. This typically will pass within a minute, assuming they do their best to stay calm and keep their head above water. 10 is the first 10 minutes of meaningful movement. This is the vital period in which if a person can extract themselves from the water, they should do their very best to do so. After this 10 minutes, the person's extremities will start to become numb and lethargic, slowly losing strength. This is due to the body's natural response called peripheral vasoconstriction. This is when the body naturally slows the blood flow to its extremities in an attempt to maintain core body temp. After this occurs, unless a person is wearing a flotation device or are on something floating, they typically drown. The second one is for one hour. This is the approximate time it takes for a person to fall unconscious. If a person is not wearing a flotation device or on something floating at this time, they'll likely drown. Organ failure is usually common at this point and death will usually occur shortly afterwards. The factors that typically affect cold water survival are water temperature, length of exposure time, quality of protective wear, the individual's circulatory health, their age, 
body fat percentage, ability to control their breathing, calm demeanor, and lastly, their will to survive. Hypothermia can be broken down into four stages. Mild hypothermia, when core temperature is anywhere from 90 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 to 25 degrees Celsius, and is characterized by shivering, pain, numbness, and minor movement loss. Moderate hypothermia is when core temperature is around 82 to 89 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 to 31 degrees Celsius, when an individual may be drowsy or have clouded mental faculties. Shivering stops at this point. Severe hypothermia is when the body temp has dropped down to 75 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit, or 23 to 27 degrees Celsius. This individual has likely fallen unconscious and has weak vital signs. The muscles will become rigid and the pupils dilated. And profound hypothermia is when the core has dropped below 75 degrees Fahrenheit, or 23 degrees Celsius. No vital signs will be shown. Muscles are rigid, pupils are fixed and dilated. Victims with profound hypothermia scarcely ever survive this stage and require urgent and advanced medical intervention. But what should one do if they find themselves submerged in cold water? Well first, remain calm. Do your best to maintain your breathing and lower your heart rate. Once your breathing is under control, do your best to get out of the water as fast as possible. If that isn't possible, get as much of your body out of the water as possible. In the event you can't do this, stop moving. Assume the help position, or the heat escape lessening position. Your body may naturally do this, but simply pull your legs up close to your chest and wrap your arms around them, essentially curl into a ball. Only move if absolutely necessary. But prevention goes a long way in combating hypothermia. U.S. Coast Guard ice rescue teams wear a complex suit and set of gear when performing rescues but it's understandable that someone won't be able to wear all of that. At the very least, cover the vital heat loss areas, i.e. the head, neck, torso, and groin. When around water, always wear a flotation device, and if you can, some sort of signaling device, like a flashlight, signal mirror, or even pyrotechnics. And always have a plan, and let someone know where you are going. Hypothermia is a slow and agonizing way to die that has plagued sailors for centuries. Even in our modern day, hypothermia is still a major risk, but knowing what it is and how to combat it is one of the greatest tools in a sailor's repertoire. Stay safe out there, and fair winds and following seas to you shipmates.